gals and welcome to another Unity video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoy it or learn something from the video, consider liking it and consider subscribing for more Blender, Unity 3D, coding, and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So in going on and moving on with our complete player control script, uh, last time we added the binocular script which enabled us to oops forgot a semicolon anyway so our binocular script enabled us to right click to get the uh, the uh, the zoom in effect that's what we worked on last time so now um, I've enabled a functional not the best but a functional and simple simple camera scripts it's camera switch script that's kind of hard to say so when we press the uh, key V we get a different view of as many as we want from an array of cameras that we set up that are parented to the parented to the uh, player so we have our stock camera and you'll see it also updates the GUI at the top left corner we have a top-down camera we have a third-person camera which doesn't work in the true third-person aspect but it's, it's just a different camera and an action camera so kind of a side view so how does this work well it's fairly simple let's let's take a look at how this is set up now you're gonna get lots and lots of ears because uh the way I set up the GUI stuff isn't really proper and um, I should probably be using the new UI stuff but it's good to learn how to uh, how to print how to print uh, UI components like that when needed anyways so onto the script again remember I am using Visual Studio so um, no differences again in, from mono just that I can debug on the fly, so we'll go through it as usual. Uh, I'm going to go a little quicker than usual, though. I'm assuming you guys get the basics from now. So we have our uh, we have our global variables. So we have uh, a bunch of public cameras, and so the camera uh, the camera variable just allows you to attach a camera to a variable name so we have our main camera top down camera third person camera and action camera and you could call these anything because we're going to be attaching cameras to them then we have uh, a bunch of private variables we have a variable uh, camera array called cameras so that just allows us to have an array to choose from this array here excuse me then we have a private integer variable called current camera index which starts at zero because all arrays start at zero and our default camera would be zero our, which would be our main camera then we have uh, another camera variable called current camera so that basically just uh, just uh, sets whoops just just sets the uh, takes whatever camera is current and sets it to this variable name. Then we have uh, just a string, and this could be public too, but you really don't need need it, so I made it private. Called camera name, which is used in the on GUI function that we explored with the binocular script. However, this time we're not using a texture; we're just using a string in a rectangle. So let's go over the let's go over all the actual code so this time we are using the start function so in the start function we set up our cameras our array of cameras so um, we take the variable cameras which is a camera array and it's equal to a new camera which gets picked from an array of the ones that we've set in this case we have four again I've gone through them all um, the current camera is equal to main camera so we set 
the current camera so the current or we set the camera that we start with to whatever we want in this case the main camera so the default camera and then this and then it just calls the change view function which is down here which we'll go through later so on to the update function which is called every frame obviously so if the v key is pressed and released so if you actually press and release like tap the v key not hold it down or or um anything like that or not it's only when it's released so basically when the v key is pressed and this could be any any key string or any key code or whatever um if we do that, so if, if the key is pressed, then we increment the current camera index. So basically kind of like a count of what camera we're on. Uh, we increment it by one. And then there's just an another, there's an if, an if check within, within the if statement. There's another if statement that basically just uh, checks to make sure that um, our current camera index is greater than uh, the length, so the the number of the number you returned from cameras minus one. So basically, um, and if and if it is greater than that, then it returns um, current or it sets current camera index to zero, which is our main camera. So I'll show you. I'll show you why this is important. It's basically so we don't run out of cameras, and this just sets it to default to camera zero if this condition here is met. And then finally, we uh, we just run the change view function again. So the actual change view function, what it does is it disables the currently enabled camera component. So current camera dot enabled is equal to false. So current camera is obviously our variable dot enabled, just a basic function in Unity. We set it to false. And then we change it to um, whatever the current camera index count is. So that'll be uh, the integer one, obviously which um, you'll see the square brackets here, meaning it's our cameras array. So this array up here, cameras, is this array. So we have zero, one, two, and three in this array. And then, and then it just enables the new camera. So the current camera, it just uh, re-enables the camera component. So the current camera it, uh, is enabled and we set it to true. And then just to sh tell us what camera we're on, we could debug to the console if we wanted. You could uh, use textures like in Call of Duty where it has like, um, the crouch and prone function, I think of that kind of, this comes to mind if you were to use the same thing similar to what we did in the binocular where we actually used a 2D texture. Um, very similar, we're just using a string instead. So um, this is gonna be constantly called, so it'll always be there. So again, I've added the comment that this obviously isn't isn't the best approach. It's a simple approach, but it's not the best approach. So it can be improved using uh, uh, by expanding th this to get an index of the uh, the camera dot current um, string because it, I'll show you again why this is important and why it can be improved on or we can use something like dot replace but this just works because all of our camera names are basically pretty much the same length you know we have about that length or what is that about nine characters or so so it, it'll it'll only show the first so many characters 
and if you had uh, all your camera names the exact same length then you could just change this number and this would work perfectly but they're not the exact same length hence why we get the uh, warnings but they're they're nothing major it's just a little inefficient but it's simple so basically we have our variable camera name cam name which is equal to a string that just says current camera with a space and then we append so plus the uh, current camera so the the camera component that is currently enabled so it can be again any of any of these from our array and since this is since this is called all the time including um at start it'll it'll start off with our with our main camera since that's called at start anyways um so the camera name is the current camera plus camera dot current however then we go camera name is that string so camera name equals camera name so the, the camera name is camera name but then we remove um we remove all characters after the uh after the 26th letter because it shows some extra stuff we really don't need on screen and again i'll show you why and then we uh then we just uh create a gui text area and we create a new rectangle, um, 10 pixels from the top and left hand side of the screen. Excuse me, and then, and it's a rectangle, sorry, that's uh, length is 250 pixels and 30 pixels tall. And the text it displays is our string cam name. So I already showed you how it works. When you play the game, uh, you just press V to switch cameras and again it shows you up here what camera you have you can see some of them get cut off that's because we're up to the whatever character um, number we're at and so the reason I quickly just uh, threw that together is because if we get rid of this if we comment it out whoops wrong button then we just get extra unity information. It says uh, unity engine dot camera. So yeah, you could uh, you could remove that completely. You could get another way of getting what current camera you're on. There's hundreds of ways to do everything when you're programming. I just made a quick and dirty one so you can see that we get our full camera names, but we get that extra Unity Engine camera. We could cut it off by making the, the rectangle shorter too. There's there's a bunch of different solutions, obviously, to everything. It just depends how creative you are. But I thought that looked the best while giving us some warning, so hurting our performance a tiny, tiny bit. And then why this extra if... Um, if check is is important if we comment that out and save it then when we play the game it works we default to our main camera we can switch to top down we can switch to third person we can switch to action camera however when we try to go to the next camera then it uh it basically that function fails the uh, the if statement is no longer uh, or the the camera index or whatever is greater than whatever the value is supposed to be. I can't remember offhand without looking at the script. It's it's basically we run we've run out of cameras in our array is what I meant to say. So yeah, no matter how much we press V, we don't get our camera back. So there's nothing, there's no camera renderer enabled, so we don't see anything. So that's why that simple uh, if statement is there. So that is really about all there is to it. Um, I can't really show this all at once 
if you want the script handy, I could probably, um, I could post it if, if, if wanted. But yeah, it's really quite simple there. I think you can see it all there. Yeah, just like that. So anyways, I just wanted to show that off. So thanks for watching another Unity video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, consider liking the video and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Blender underscore tech and Facebook at Facebook.com slash Blender tech page, all one word. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why in a comment or a private email at info at blendertech.com so that we can improve our future videos based on your community input. We also take requests for tutorials and call for help videos. So if you're having an issue, send us an email or a comment, or if you want to see a tutorial, just let us know and we'll put it on the list. So talk to you guys next time. Remember, create your way.